Welcome to the LSE Methodology Institute SPSS Tutorial Series, sponsored by the LSE Annual Fund. In this video, we will carry out a multiple linear regression analysis. In this tutorial, we will show how to run a multiple linear regression. The response variable is resources. There is a statement that says that we are using up the Earth resources too quickly. The respondents can agree with this statement on a 10-point scale, where 1 is no, definitely not, and 10 is yes, definitely. The explanatory variables are gender, age in years, and income, the annual household income. To run the multiple linear regression, we simply have to go to Analyze, Regression, and Linear. The dependent variable is Resources and independent variables are gender, age, and income. We may ask SPSCS to show the confidence intervals in the output by clicking in the bottom statistics and ticking confidence intervals and then continue and OK. So now that we have the SPSS output, let's have a look at what some of this output means. Let's first focus on this table here that says Model Summary. And in particular, let's look at the two numbers in the center, R-square and adjusted R-square. R-square in this example is 0 0.137, which means that 13.7% of the variance of the response variable resources is being explained by our model. Adjusted R-square has a similar interpretation, but takes into account the number of variables we're using in our model. On this table, we also have the residual standard deviation here. So now let's scroll down to the bottom table from the SPSS output. And what we see on the left is the constant, which refers to the constant of the regression equation, and our explanatory variables. And for the constant and for each of the explanatory variables, we're given the unstandardized coefficients, the standard errors, we're given the standardized coefficients for the explanatory variables, the values of the t-test statistic, the corresponding p-values, and finally to the right we're given the lower and upper bounds of the 95 percent confidence intervals. In this type of example the constant doesn't have any important substantive meaning, so we'll leave it aside. And we'll look instead at the interpretation of the explanatory variables. What we're interested in doing is figuring out whether or not there's any evidence of relationships in the population between the explanatory variables and the response variables controlling for the other explanatory variables. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So for age, the null hypothesis is that in the population there is no linear relationship between age and resources controlling for gender and income. What we find is that the t-test statistic value is 2.254 and we have a relatively small p-value which suggests that we can in fact reject our null hypothesis and there is some evidence of a linear relationship in the population between age and resources controlling for the other explanatory variables. Moreover, we see that the unstandardized coefficient is 0 0.023, which is positive, which means it's a positive relationship. So the older you are, you tend to have a higher score on the resources variable. You agree more strongly with the statement that we're using up the Earth's resources too quickly. The numerical interpretation is that for each additional year of age, on average your score or the value of resources increases by 0 0.023. Now if we now focus on the second explanatory variable, gender, gender is a binary variable with 0 coded for female and 1 coded for male so the interpretation is slightly different. The null hypothesis here is that in the population there is no difference in the average values of resources between males and females. And what we see here is that the t-test statistic is minus 4.276 
and we have quite a small p-value, which suggests that we can reject our null hypothesis of no difference of the average scores between males and females. And in fact, uh, there is some evidence that in the population there is a difference in the average values of resources for males and females. And if we want to interpret this uh, coefficient, minus 1.497, it suggests that males have, on average, a score of resources about one and a half points lower than their female counterparts. Finally, let's look at the income explanatory variable. And what we see is that First, our null hypothesis is that in the population there is no relationship between income and resources controlling for age and gender. So we look at our t test statistic, which is 0 0.816, and we see that our p-value is not particularly low, and so we don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and so we don't analyze this relationship any further. And so there you have it. We've shown you how to set up a multiple linear regression analysis. We've then looked through the SPSS output and identified R squared and adjusted R squared, had a look at some of the other values in that table. And then finally, we went through each of the explanatory variables, ran a series of hypothesis tests. And in some cases, we found evidence of relationships between the variable and the response variable, controlling for the other explanatory variables, and in, in one case we didn't. And so that's all for this video. Goodbye for now.